Well, after a strong debut from Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse last week, can Transformers Rise of the Beasts become the next summer hit? Here to share his thoughts on how much he loves the film, I'm sure, is our film critic, Rad. What do you think of it? Uh, I'm dying. <laughs> Your enthusiasm there, the movie can't even top that. <laughs> like, I mean, they should have just had, like, they should just have you say Rise of the Beasts over and over again. It'll be more fun than this movie. No, I mean, not to trash this movie. <laughs> okay, so before I get more thoughts on it. Let's watch the trailer. <laughs> Our kind has stayed hidden on Earth. But darkness has found us again. Prime. This is about the fate of all living things. Unicron is coming. A human. There's a human <laughs> There's in this movie, Rod. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. I was wondering if there'd be any actual people. By the way, you see that this movie is set in 1994. Oh, fun. Right. Okay. So, and again, I should say, like, this is, the, I, I feel like what they're trying to do is they're trying to overhaul the Transformers franchise because, like, you know, you, you think about this franchise, it was largely overseen by Michael Bay, right. Bayham. You know, they're loud, they're clanky, they, they hurt your brain, and they just kept getting worse from there. And then so they realized we need to overhaul it. The last movie, Bumblebee, was set in the 80s, tried to capture, like, an ET vibe uh this one this one's trying to capture kind of like will smith in, in independence day that kind of vibe like it's trying to take you back to the old school blockbusters what i like about that is it's trying to also appeal to someone like me it's trying to appeal to a diverse crowd with these really talented actors uh anthony ramos and dominique fishback anthony ramos you know from hamilton oh, yeah. dominique fishback who just killed it in swarm really charming actors and you know they give them like a hip-hop soundtrack of like 90s jams like you know nas tribe called quest so really vibing but vibing in a way that i I know the AI could have programmed it for me. Like the algorithms would have said, hey, if I want to appeal to a millennium person of color, let me just have all of these elements. So, but having people like Anthony Ramos and stuff, I, I, you saw none of them in that trailer. Obviously, that, that was all just CGI. But having them for like the first half of the movie, I was kind of into it. I know John Paul over there, he was he was really like, it, oh, the blood, let this be great. But then the CGI takes over and they clobber each other and I And it's Transformers. Out. Yeah, exactly. It becomes a Transformers movie. Okay, so I, like I'm, I will say I'm fully invested in this movie and I really want to see it. So besides me, who yeah. else is this for? Well, look, I mean, if you like Transformers movies, Check. this is about as good as it gets, okay? Right. Like, I, I can't, like, I think if you like the original Transformers movie, you would have enjoyed this. If you like Pacific Rim, specifically Uprising, the sequel to Pacific Rim, it'll, you know, you'll like this movie. The, the original Pacific Rim's a bit up there. Okay, <laughs> okay. switching yeah. gears to a bittersweet romantic movie, this one called Past Lives. What is this about? Yeah, so Past Lives, you know, first I should say like almost all the critics are saying this is like the best movie of the year so far, right? right? And I'm not quite there with them yet because we, you know, we just had Spider-Verse, like come on guys. But like, no, but this is, it's, it's really exciting to see all of these people loving this rookie film from Canadian director Celine Song, Ooh. right? And, and it's basically, she's taking her own immigration story and her own romantic life, making a movie out of it. It's a story about, you know, like that's based on her being a young child, her, uh, you know, having a, a childhood best friend and then leaving Korea to come to Toronto first and then to New York City as an adult. And, and it's, it's, it's about how, like, you know, as uh, the immigration story, how, you know, the lives we leave behind, we sometimes kind of embalm them in this kind of rose colored hues, our memories of these people and stuff. And so she tells that story through the story of this relationship with how she carries on the memory of her childhood best friend or they keep in touch as she's moving on and they finally reunite. It's, and what I loved about this movie is just how gentle it is because it's like you know it, it's kind of like before sunset i don't remember before sunset that's like the masterpiece of, of of a relationship that's all about longing right it's filled completely with longing it's kind of like that but this one you know over uh, tracking over several decades but it's so gentle where it's like it's not about mess it's a romantic story where there's no drama there's no big gun misunderstandings there's no fireworks even when it seems like your partner is really interested in somebody else everyone's very understanding and nurturing and just trying to try to find the nicest way about it Maybe I didn't kind of buy that a little. It's a little too kind, but I definitely wanted to buy into that world. And oh. and it's it's a movie that sneaks up on you. I think the reason why the critics are so hyperbolic and they're oh my god, it's so amazing, is because it packs a powerful punch with all that gentleness, gentleness just accumulating. Rad, I'm in. I'm just, like I just, I just. You will cry. be in tears. Yeah, oh, <laughs> you will, yeah, okay. absolutely. Yes. I okay. was. I mean, I know, I'll admit, at the end of that movie, I was there. You shed a tear. I was like, I was like, <gasps> the, the, the final note in this movie really got me. Whoa, yeah. okay, that, like, that's a big endorsement counter. There you go. <laughs> Brad, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me.